hello to you, Mr Shapps. Thanks very much indeed for joining us on the programme. Lots to talk to you about, but I want to talk about the rail strikes to start with this morning, if I may. Why have these negotiations failed? Essentially, the, the unions uh, do not want to uh, modernise uh, the work practices so we can run the modern railway uh, for passengers. Uh, essentially, they've been taking the passengers for a ride with some of these antiquated um, methods that, that are in place, for example, not being able to send out uh, a single van, having to send two vans to maintenance and not running a seven day service, for example. We, we have to literally, on some railway lines, um, appeal to... Uh, the better nature of, of uh, staff to even run a, a railway service on a Sunday. Uh, and that can't be right in the 21st century when leisure travel actually is the bigger part or becoming the bigger part of the transport network. So we have to have this modernisation. It's there to be sorted out and, and, and therefore a pay rise can be had as well. But I'm afraid the unions have been incredibly militant about this. And that's where we are, where we are today. And the unions are saying that um, they haven't spoken to a minister for months. When was the last time you spoke to them? Yeah, they, they don't need to speak to ministers to resolve this because their employers are the people who have the uh, mandate to negotiate this. They're the people who uh, they can resolve this with. So this is just, I'm afraid, them uh, trying to distract attention. And if I put this into perspective, since I've been Transport Secretary, they've issued about 160 different disputes. There hasn't been a single day where there hasn't been either strike action or a mandate for strike action uh, ongoing. That's just not normal in any industry. And that's why we need to, I'm afraid, do more uh, to remove the power of these very militant extreme left unions from disrupting everyday lives for ordinary people. Um, how much involvement does the government have on the funding of Network Rail? Yeah, so we set the mandate, just as we would for, you know, for example, for the NHS or for any other public service, but it is for the employers and the unions to resolve these things, simply for the fact that they're, you know, incredibly detailed um, discussions uh, that, you know, the unions know can only be resolved with their employees. So, of course, we set the overall mandate. That's the whole point of a government spending uh, taxpayers' money. But the only negotiation can be uh, with the employers themselves, who have a mandate, um, but I'm afraid the unions don't want to know about it. As I say, they've been taking passengers for a ride on this for far too long. And it's one of the reasons why we've started on the on the, on the the road to introducing legislation. We've just made two uh, legal changes, law changes, uh, to um, start to make um, the service run better, even when there are strikes on. OK, so you set the mandate, you're in charge of the purse strings, but you think you can wash your hands of any negotiations to try and sort this out? It's not a question of washing my hands. It's just I'm not the right person to be in the room negotiating. I, 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 with great respect, I'm not the person to discuss, for example, the maintenance schedules of uh, individual uh, groups of workers uh, in situations where, for example, they have to send out an entire roster uh, to do a job that may just require uh, one or two people. Um, but uh, only the employer would have the technical detail to ha be having those discussions. There simply is no reason uh, to, to, for the unions to be speaking to anybody other than the employers. Uh, and by the way, it's never happened in the past. I, I know we could learn going back to disputes during the, the, the Blair and Brown years. Um, the unions were never in the room. I note in London where the RMT are on strike and there is a Labour mayor. Uh, the uh, mayor is not in the room, or if he is, he's it's not, not working for the because those strikes so are ongoing. He? He's not uh, yes, responsible. Yes, he is. For the yes, in in in, he's in London, it is. How much? Oh, okay, okay, that's interesting. In, in um, London, in to... London, it's for the mayor to 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 um, set the overall, um, you know, if you like, the overall pay budget, the overall mandate. Yeah, that that's for the mayor. Okay. Um, so just to clarify, at no stage will, you, even if this rumbles on, will you get involved? It's just a game by the unions. Uh, they know that they can get this Is that a no or a yes? They, they, it's a no. They, it's a game by the unions. They, it's a complete red herring as well, by the way. And it's simply not how strikes are resolved. It can only ever be the employer, in this case, Network Rail, the train operating companies, uh, and the unions. And by the way, the unions should actually put these offers to their members. Um, the unions have an offer on the table at Network Rail, which is uh, around 8%. Uh, for the next two years, this year and next year, uh, based on actually carrying out these modernizations, which are decades overdue. 
Um, and uh, they didn't even bother to put it to their members. They simply called another strike. That can't be right. And it's one of the reasons why one of the changes I'd be looking to uh, bring in would be to uh, limit the ability to carry on taking strike, ac strike action under a single mandate which can be cheap, which can have been called as much as six months earlier. So we've got to modernise these union laws. I'm afraid, given that every single person watching, every household watching your programme, spends six hundred pounds to ensure that not a single rail worker uh, was left unemployed or even had to go on furlough uh, during the uh, pandemic. Uh, this is one heck of a way to repay hardworking viewers uh, by going on strike, even okay. when a payoff is on the table. Okay, just... When modernisation is what's required. OK, let me let me just ask you for a thought on this. Um, not really your remit, but I'm sure you've got a view. Shadow Transport Minister uh, Sam Tarry, uh, we're being told he's on the picket line uh, at Euston this morning. What do you think? Oh, well, it's clearly in direct defiance of uh, Sir Keir Starmer, who's told his front bench that they shouldn't be. So we'll leave that disciplinary action to Sir Keir. No doubt he'll want to remove him from his job. Look, nobody should be on the picket lines stopping hardworking people who spent... Uh, I mentioned £600 per family. That works out to £160,000 per rail worker, preventing any of them from losing their jobs during the pandemic. We come out of the pandemic, and this is the way that people are being thanked. And if Labour front benchers want to go and join them on the picket line, well, people will come to their own conclusions. I've no doubt Sir Keir Starmer will want to sack him.